Hey Roadrunners, welcome back. It is Monday, it took me a while to get this video together. Been busy all weekend, doing a lot of fun things. Watching the football game was one of them. And it was a big win. I said it was going to be a close, hard-fought game. Don't be surprised, regardless of UAB's record. I expected a 10-point victory. We came out with a 6-point victory. I personally think, when we look at the game, and you look especially in that first half, we let opportunities go offensively. And more importantly, more importantly, if you look at time of possession, we did a lot of things that worked in the favor for UAB. Constantly throwing the ball. We, yeah, Frank only, only had eight incompletions, you know, and I get that. But there was a drive. I think we were up 13 to 7, and we, were go we drove to make it 16 to 7. Whereas, like, they said it was third and one, but then they said on TV it was third and three. We were running the ball really good. That was the best running display we've ever had. And I wouldn't have thrown the ball there. Not, no how, no way. You're already in field goal range. In fact, if you run the ball and you get close enough, you can use Frank to get a first down. Right? And you keep the ball and you keep the drive going instead of leaving enough time on the clock for UAB to start slinging around, just throwing up, hoping for a prayer. Because in modern football, it's hard to defend. It is really hard to defend. Ask Alabama. How many pass interferences did they get against LSU? And those, some of those were really questionable too. But they were still called, weren't they? So it's going to happen to us. That's why we throw the ball so much. But my point is, when you're able to run the ball better than you've ever run it, 200 plus yards of rushing for us, they were sub their, 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 their average. But they still had time of possession plus three minutes, 31 to 28. I think that's what it was, time of possession. Let me see, team stats. 31 and a half to 28.3. Mm, there you go. That should never happen. That should never happen. You know what that does? Tires out your defense. And it gives them time to figure out what you're doing. More importantly, more importantly, you they only scored 10 points in the first half. And like I said, that second three, that's all on our offense, not keeping the clock running. I, I, I'm a big, the clock is your friend when you're up, especially when you're dominating. Now I get it, there's only 30 minutes and a half, but you still don't give up three points. We still let them have enough time to do whatever they wanted and score three points in this first half. Second half, we, we scored really quick, and they came right back down, down the field, right? We gave the ball right back to them, and they came right back down the field. That was a breakdown on defense. There ain't no lie. I mean, they offensively, they did okay. But what did we do offensively out of our norm? Really nothing. I mean, we had a decent game offensively, if you think about it. If you look at everything outside of the running of Barnes, Barnes is just incredible. That's something we've got to look for. And teams are going to figure it out that we're going to throw. If Frank sneaks it and runs in that final drive, we keep the ball. They don't score. We keep the ball for the full time. And we go into the half at worst case, 16 to 7. It's the clock's your friend. You've got to know the clock's your friend. And then we can just take it easy on them, right? Like we started doing the second half. Now, hey, give these kids a ton of credit. These kids are winners. That, that's just what they are. What, what, how else are you going to, de de to define this 2022 UTSA team? After you see what they did last year, after you see how they overcame 2019, came into 2020, won seven games. Won 12 games last year. Answered the bell after just getting mollywhopped by UNC and won the conference championship over Western Kentucky, right? Literally played the, hard, the hardest schedule in Conference USA last year. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Played the hardest schedule. And played the hardest schedule this year. It's going to end up being the hardest schedule when you throw in Rice. 
Rice has two losses. Rice is the only team that can derail UTSA from hosting Conference USA. The only team. UTSA beats Rice. Well, they got two losses. They got to hope UNT loses because UNT only has one. But you get my point. UTSA can go two and three as long as they beat Rice. Well, if they go two and three, they can lose the Rice because Rice has two losses. And it won't matter, right? They win two of the next three, it won't matter. But if they beat Rice, they're guaranteed to be in Conference USA uh, 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 championship game. It's just whether it's going to be hosted in Denton or San Antonio. I know there's three games, a lot of football left. A lot of football left. We'll see what they can do. Now, they've got to give some shout-outs. Corey Mayfield, Dajan Taylor, and Booker Brown. Good Lord, were they playing some football Saturday. They were total impact players on the defensive side. Total impact players. In fact, that one long run for 68 yards, there's a reason why the middle was open because Dadrian wasn't there, right? He was he was out of the game with an injury. He got out. He came back in later, and that's when that hole opened up. And our, our, our substitute or our defensive rotation at that time took the wrong hole. And if he just steps to his left, I forgot what the player's number is. He just steps to his left. Instead of going to his right, he stops to cut back. And who knows? Probably ends the drive there. You know, I'm telling you, it, this defense has some special things that when they just follow where they're supposed to be, they can play some really good defense for at least two quarters. And, and G5, how many teams are going to stop our offense? Right? Hey, you can't tell me you did when we got to that second overtime. You can't tell me you didn't think uh, 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 they weren't going to score also. But the defense knuckled up when it mattered. They knuckled up big time, right? Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive showing by them, even though the stats don't look like it. But for six, six periods... Right? Basically what it is. They gave up what? 553 yards. Well, our offense only did 494 with extra football. We've done that in our sleep. Now, let's talk offensively. That offensive line, uh, they've got some kind of vibe going right now. And that's important to see. Because Brendan's getting a push when he's going through it. And the best thing about Brendan was when he gets through there, Man, he just kept falling, especially in that overtime run. He he got his back going. He just churned with his legs. That de their defense was tired. Leading me back to that drive where I said we should have run the ball. You beat down on them. Keep them out there. Keep their defense on the field. Don't even have to make don't even have to make a rotational change, right? Don't have to bring anybody different. That's that's just all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Now let's talk about Barnes. Good Lord. That catch and that run after that catch and then just the way he ran, he's got a different gear. He's I I can't say he's probably the fastest running back we've we've had, but he's the biggest and the fastest we've had. The meatiest and the fastest we've had. If that makes sense. As a package. As a package. He's lightning in a bottle and he gets going quick. He's almost like when we had, uh, what's his name, Bi Bias, Kenny Bias and uh, Cam Jones, that kind of speed, except for he's a big kid and he's a running back, specific, right? A type of running back that's big, powerful, downhill, and he finds that hole, man. He knows how to cut back. There's a lot of that cut back that Sincere would see. He's seeing a lot quicker while having his speed, right? Like Sincere. Brendan doesn't really bring that to us. But what Brendan does do it is you know that hole's there, and that's where the hole's supposed to go. And even though that our linemen are there and their linemen are there, you're adding him crashing down into there, pushing their linemen back, wearing their linemen down. That's old school football. That's back when three yards in a cloud of dust was a thing, right? Nebraska football. You just kept getting, kept hitting, kept hitting. And then before you know it, one small side sidestep and boom goes the house. 
Next drive, one small sidestep, goes the house. Boom, next drive, no one's in the hole, to the house, right? That, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Now, let's give, let me finish this off with talking about DeCorian and JT. DeCorian and JT Clark, right? What, what, what a, oh man. That, that, that was, that was, that was a soul crushing for me moment of the game. And that set me in a foul mood the entire game. In a foul mood. If you looked at me cross-eyed, I was ready to fight. If you had been near me and you looked at me cross-eyed, I probably would have throat punched you. That that's how foul it put me in there. I I I felt for him. He's been such a hard player. He comes off making that miraculous catch in an innocuous play out of bounds. Knee gives out, and that didn't look pretty whatsoever. Hmm. Whoo. Now. What was nice to see, and what I think a player we've all probably put way back in the back of our mind is Ogle Kellogg. Because before Clark came on the scene, he was the third guy, kind of, right? Because Clark is a 2020 player. So in 2020, Ogle Kellogg uh, was still kind of our, our, our third option, right? One of our bigger options uh, at, at wide receiver. So... We're deep. I've told you. I'm not kidding when I say it. We may not be the best G5 receiving core right now, losing Clark. But find me a G5 core that's better. Up and down the lineup. I'm being dead serious when I say this. Every one of our wide receivers, if you put them side by side, you might see the size difference. But when they're on their pads, if they're not wearing numbers, you wouldn't know. If they were all, if they weren't wearing numbers and they were lined up, you really wouldn't know who they were. That that's they're all the same size. They all are can leap. They all can catch. They can all run. It's it's pretty impressive. But anyway, we got to give uh, Clark all our all our best wishes. See him come back because this is. Uh, yeah, that was disheartening. That that was that was something that could take away from a a great victory, a hard fought victory for our road runners. These kids are winners. He's a winner, and I know he'll he'll put everything into into recovering. I'll, I'll I'll say to him on this video what I've what I said to uh, Treek Woolen, and uh, I forgot this was years back. Job number one right now is recovery. Job number one is the process right now is not football. The process right now is recovery. Doing everything your doctors tell you to do. Everything your 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 therapist, your physical therapist, your rehab tells you to do. And do it then. Sleep well. Take all your vitamins. They tell you that you got to move that leg. You got to move the leg. Right? They tell you you got to rest the leg. You got to rest the leg. Right? Or that body part. That That's... I gotta give I tell give him a shout out. Man, hate to see it. Hate to see it. Hate to absolutely see it. But I know he'll recover from this. This is what winners do. He's a winner. And if not, if he can't go forward after after that game, right? You know what I'm getting at. There are worse things in life than leaving UTSA with a college diploma. Focus on that too. Your your rehab, your recovery, and your school. Double down on your school while you got this time, right? If this is going to be a year, so you got all year on UTSA's dime, go take those classes that you might not have had time before, right? That's another advice I give him. Go go take an advanced math math class that you might not have had time for because of football, right? Do, do, I'm being dead serious. It's on UTSA's dime right now. All it takes is put, getting on your crutch, getting on your walker, whatever it is, and getting to class and taking those classes. I know Jeff Trailer would 100% agree with what I just said. That's why you guys play so hard for him. That's why they play so hard for him. I'll say it again. There are worse things in life than leaving school 
with a UTSA diploma and not being able to play football going forward. But with that being said, we need you back next year. Do everything right. Peace out. Boo! Oh,